Hi there, I'm Darby. In case you hadn't noticed, I'm a dog. I work with doctors and nurses to help kids who are sick or injured. I'm glad you're spending the day with me. Today we're going to hang out with some of my friends who are living life on dialysis. These kids all have kidney disease and they all live life on dialysis. Dialysis is a medical word that means cleaning the blood. Kids need dialysis when their kidneys don't work well enough to keep them healthy. Healthy kidneys work 24 hours a day to keep your body well. Most people don't realize all the things kidneys do until something goes wrong. Kidneys work to filter waste from your blood, flush extra water and waste as urine, balance important minerals and chemicals like sodium, potassium, calcium, and phosphorus, and manufacture chemicals called hormones that help control blood pressure and make red blood cells. Now that you understand what your kidneys do, let's go meet some of my friends who are living life on dialysis. Come on, let's go. We're going to talk about two kinds of dialysis, hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. Hemodialysis is typically done in a clinic. That's where kids come in for their treatments. Some of my friends come here three times a week. Peritoneal dialysis is usually done at home and those kids come to the clinic only a few times a month. Here we are. This is the room where all the kids get their hemodialysis treatments. All clinics are a little different, but ours is a big room with lots of chairs and hemodialysis machines. Oh look, Montreal is already here. When Montreal arrived, he slipped off his shoes and weighed on this really cool scale. The nurse needs to know my weight between treatments and I have to take my temperature before each treatment. Once Montreal has checked in, he goes over to the hemodialysis machine. Montreal's nurse checks his blood pressure and then he sits down to get comfortable. Here's another one of my friends, Isaac. He is applying numbing cream to his arm. I put this cream on my arm so it can numb the area that the needle is going to so it won't hurt so much. The nurse inserts two needles into his arm. There is a special place where the nurse puts the needle each time Isaac needs dialysis. This place is called a fistula. Isaac had a special operation where the surgeon connected a vein in an artery in his arm. Blood needs to be able to leave his body, travel through a tube to the dialysis machine to be cleaned, and then returns to his body. This is Angela. She also has a fistula, but it is not quite ready to be used for hemodialysis. It needs more time to heal. The nurses will use a catheter until the fistula is ready. The catheter is not removed between dialysis treatments. It stays in the vein for as long as it is used. Alexis also uses a hemodialysis catheter. To prevent infection, the catheter is always covered with a sterile bandage and is only changed by the nurse. For hemodialysis treatment, the nurse connects the dialysis tubing to the catheter. Catheters may seem easier and less painful, but there are many problems with using catheters. A serious problem with catheters is the risk of infection that can spread through the blood. Yuck! Now that their treatments have begun, the kids can relax. The nurses will be checking to make sure everything is going well with treatment. The kids stay seated in their chairs, and there are lots of activities to do at the clinic. Sometimes I take a nap, other times I do my homework, and most I like to play on the laptop. Some parents stay with their kids during dialysis, but some parents need to go to work or take care of other family members so the kids stay in the clinic with the nurses and other staff taking care of them. Our clinic has a person called the Child Life Specialist, who helps explain all the medical stuff that goes on. She also provides fun and educational things for the kids to do while they are in the clinic. Everyone's time on the machine is different. Doctors decide how long each patient needs to dialyze. Usually, treatments last about three and a half to four hours. Sometimes, the machine beeps to let the nurse know that an adjustment needs to be made. Sometimes nurses give medications through the tubing. Once their treatments are done, the kids finish with a final checkup from the nurses. Then they get to leave and do what other kids do, like go to school, play with friends, ride bikes, whatever. I go to a high school and I'm about to graduate, so the school and also Dallas makes it easy to go to school and manage between work and, of course, dialysis. So, now you have met some of the kids on hemodialysis, but I want you to meet my other friends on peritoneal dialysis. They have the dialysis every night at home. Peritoneal dialysis uses the lining that covers and protects your bowels and other organs inside your belly, called the peritoneal membrane, to clean your blood. This membrane makes a good dialysis filter because it has tiny holes in it and works like a strainer to rid the body of wastes. Kids on peritoneal dialysis need an operation to place a tube called a peritoneal catheter in their abdominal cavity, usually in the area under their belly button. The inside part of the catheter is in the body's peritoneal cavity. 
The top part of the catheter stays outside the skin. The catheter looks like a short, soft plastic straw and can be taped flat against the skin. Let's go over to Michael's house. He's just getting started on his dialysis for the night. Hi, Mom. Hey. He has already had his weight and blood pressure checked by his parents. They check it every night before dialysis starts and every morning when dialysis is over. During peritoneal dialysis, germ-free dialysis fluid is infused into the peritoneal cavity through the peritoneal catheter. Throughout the night, fluid is infused and then drained out through the catheter, taking the waste products out. His parents set up the machine and then they can go to bed themselves. Michael must stay in bed for his entire treatment, which will last for 8 to 10 hours. In the morning, he's unhooked from dialysis and ready to go to school with his classmates. Hey, do you like to play pool? I was hanging out with my friend Jacob the other day, and Jacob also does his peritoneal dialysis at home. He is old enough to help his parents with his dialysis treatment at night. Jacob likes home peritoneal dialysis because he has more time to go to school and enjoy free time. Another reason peritoneal dialysis is so great is that it can be used on kids of all ages. Brody's at the clinic for his checkup now. He started peritoneal dialysis when he was only two weeks old. Let's watch the nephrologist, who is the kidney doctor, examine Brody. Isn't he a cute little guy? Brody, that is. In addition to a peritoneal catheter for his dialysis, Brody also has a gastrostomy feeding tube so he can get his formula when he doesn't feel like eating. All the peritoneal dialysis patients meet with the healthcare team at least once a month. Brody and his parents are meeting for his clinic visit today. So the entire medical team, you know, is just so helpful and is available any time for me to answer, you know, any questions that I might have. Some babies and small children can also have a porta cast. This is a device inserted by a surgeon just under the skin, usually in the chest area. It connects to a big vein that goes to the heart. A port makes it easier to get medicines from the nurses and draw blood. Wow, we sure have talked about a lot of stuff. But there are a few other things you need to know about kids on dialysis. Darby, you know we got to watch what we eat and drink too. You're right, Montreal. When kids are on any kind of dialysis, they have to be careful about what they eat and drink. Do you want to know why? When kidneys work, they take up the waste from the food you eat. Now, the kidneys can't. If you eat the wrong foods and drink too much, the wastes and fluids build up in your body. Dialysis takes out some waste, but it can't do everything. If you eat and drink too many of the foods and fluids that cause the waste to build up, then you won't feel good. Some of my friends can't eat bananas or potatoes. Your healthcare team will help you learn what foods aren't good for you. Some of my friends on dialysis have to measure what they drink, and they can't drink more than the doctor says it's safe for each day. All of my friends need to eat enough calories every day to keep them strong. There's Isaac. He's finished with his hemodialysis treatment, and he's having lunch with a friend. Isaac. Do you have to do anything special when you eat in a restaurant? I can eat wherever I want to eat, but as long as I'm careful where I eat and what I eat, and also I'll take my phosphate binders. Hey, did you see that? Isaac took some pills before he started eating his lunch. Good job, Isaac. Most kids on dialysis take pills every time they eat. These are called phosphate binders. They help the body get rid of phosphorus from the food you eat. Most kids on dialysis take other medicines at home. Everyone's medications are different. I'm heading back to the park now. I heard that Montreal was going to play a little basketball after his treatment. Hey, there he is. Kids feel a lot better once they start on dialysis, which makes them able to do many of the same activities as other kids. Nice shot. The exercise is good for their bodies too. Well, I better get back to my own workout. I hope you've learned a little bit about dialysis, and I hope I answered some of your questions. Most of all, I know you saw that kids at our clinic really are living life on dialysis.